after my trip to Nippon, the birthplace of my very favorite thing in the world, anime, I'd come to quite an obvious revelation that I had not yet realized before. Seeing all those fellow weeby tourists from around the world dote over the same pair of 2D boobs has truly made me see the size of anime and how much impact it can have on everyone. I never thought it was small by any means, but it's become so much bigger than I could ever imagine. Even a few years back, during my elementary to middle school days, anime was seen as a niche nerdy hobby for losers. By that time, I had only recently moved to the US and was still trying to fit in. And since I wasn't into anime at the time, I kinda swore off of it for a long time, hoping to not be one of those nerds looked down upon by all of society. But little did I know that it had already changed me. I was already an anime nerd. Pokemon, Dragon Ball, Doraemon, stop calling it Doraemon, and Kaito Kid. I can go on and on about all of them, but the focus on today's video will be on Kaito Kid. I first stumbled upon this treasure trove when I was still a young, innocent Korean boy. I didn't know what this thing called anime was. I hadn't yet devolved into the degenerate I am today. I was still an undegenerate, a uh, generate, if you will. And during a family gathering at my grandfather's house, my cousins were watching Detective Conan, and since they are older, I didn't object, even though that show was a tad bit advanced for a 5-6 to six year old. But after the Conan section of that channel was over, it switched to something far better. Kwedo Kid, which is the Korean name of the show. Even though it was in the same channel and universe as Conan, this I could understand. A cool smart dude in a sick white cape sending even a notice to the police of when and where he would make his next heist, teeming with confidence as no one could ever outsmart him. This was cool. I watched the rest of the show and went on to forget about it for the next 10 years of my life. 10 years later, while doing present Noah things like watching anime, reading manga, writing about anime and manga, talking to a camera about anime and manga alone in my room, I suddenly got lucky enough to be able to go to Japan. I won't go into much further detail about the trip itself, I'll just leave it as, uh, it was dope. But there, the phantom of the very thing I forgot about for those many years appeared before my eyes. He wore the same classy outfit, still as cunning and witty as ever. I saw Kaito Kid, in the form of a 2D cardboard cutout with the purpose of promoting a movie. But this made me think a lot about my childhood. Oh my god, Kaito Kid. No, Kaito Kid was an anime. I have to watch it again. And if you saw the title of this video, you will notice that it won't be me just praising it. It wasn't nearly as cool or smart as before, rather it was corny and dumb, but it wasn't all that bad. I still got loads of enjoyment out of it. The sit in your room alone without the company of a friend or romantic interest at 4am and laugh at the pathetic state of the show and your life kind of enjoyment, which is probably not the intended way to enjoy it, but I still did. So today, I, your truly, Nobo Koa, will be talking about Kaito Kid, and how it's kinda stupid, but in the most enjoyable way possible. If you come to agree with me, somehow learn something new, or simply enjoy a madman's rambling, consider subscribing. I want to hit 1000 subs by the end of the year, and you can help me with that goal. I put in a lot of time and effort in each of these videos all while juggling a really hard year in school, so if you could help me out, I would just appreciate it so much. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this video. Kaito Kid, Magical Kaito 1412, or whatever you want to call it, takes place in modern day Japan where a notorious thief named Kaito Kid runs rampant during the darkness of the night to steal precious treasures from very renowned people. And this is a little 24 episode anime about Kuroba Kaito, a wild but cunning teenage boy who has a knack for magic. Not magic as in shooting explosive blasts or summoning dragons or anything like that, but magic as in sleight of hand tricks, diversions, pulling a handkerchief out of his ass, turning that same handkerchief into a flower, things like that. His dad was a famous magician who tragically passed away some time ago, and Kaito now takes the legacy as his magic protege. But one day, Kaito finds a fake wall in his room which leads to a very bat cave like dungeon where his dad stores his gadgets and treasures. Kaito is obviously startled by this revelation and he finds out without much looking into that his father was indeed the notorious Kaito kid and his butler, 
literally named Ji-chan, is now carrying out the duties of his master. Kaito inherits his dad's cape and uses magic and gadgets to outwit the police, his primary antagonistic force, and along the way, uncovers the secrets of his dad's death and potentially a gem that could grant eternal life. It's a sick concept and the whole magic theme is cool. He could pull some bona fide 5000 IQ moves and the show can show us the logic and science of why what he did works. It could utilize elements of the smart characters with vast knowledge in science and the human mind of Conan, but with a slight twist to make us actually root for the opposing force to the main character in the other series in the same universe, which in this situation happens to be our main character. It could have been so much. So many debates on who is actually smarter, who is cooler, who is morally correct, but you see, Kaito Kid is kinda dumb. From in-universe inconsistencies with how the world works to some creative writing choices and even the characters themselves are all not the brightest. There are some very peculiar inconsistencies within the universe. Now, they don't directly contradict anything so it very well could be possible, but it's small things like no one has ever seen through his hat and glasses, and by the way, yes, this is still me, the same Noah. I mean, it technically is possible that everyone's eyes turn off in his presence, but really? I get that it was part of his character design, and it is a cool design, but they don't even care to create an explanation for this very clear disparity. And it's not just people's eyes that turn off, it's apparently their brains too. The police are so comically incompetent, and I honestly think that it wouldn't be that bad if Kaito was actually any smart. Tom from Tom and Jerry is incompetent as fuck, yet it's still an all-time classic. That's because the rat does have some clever moments, making it seem like genuinely outsmarting the cat. That's why Classroom of the Elite was so shitty. It wasn't a contest of whoever was smarter, it was a contest of whoever wasn't as dumb. They literally have camera footage pretty often of Kit's whole ass face, but they are seemingly never able to pinpoint who it could possibly be, even though Kit is often at the chief police officer's house with his daughter where the stolen treasures are magically returned. Again, they could simply be wholeheartedly stupid, but seriously? The chief police officer being that dumb? And also, everyone Kaito disguises himself as are the same height? Really? And shit like this? <laughs> really? You really don't know his face. And I mentioned before that people's eyes and brains turned off, but there's one case of this that is more egregious than any other. It's a case where Aoko, Kaito's love interest and also the chief police officer's daughter apparently loses all five senses and any other cognitive abilities. She's on a date with him, literally handcuffs him to her so that she can be sure he isn't kid during a heist planned for that day, which means she has suspicions by the way. And he somehow gets away by breaking free from the handcuffs and using a fucking balloon of him to replace him. And after the heist is done, he comes back and she can confirm that Kaito is not Kid because the heist happened at the same time they were watching a movie. She really couldn't feel what she was holding was a balloon, especially when she was all over him. She couldn't smell the rubber, latex, polychloroprene, metalized plastic, or nylon fabric while practically in sniffing range. She didn't talk to him once during the whole movie where he randomly doesn't respond. She never turned around once to look at him. You don't even have to look at him fully for that. Just turning your head enough so that he is in your peripheral vision should be enough to see that he is a little bit inflated. He didn't feel a little lighter or anything. I mean, these things definitely could have happened, just like how you can be struck by lightning while winning every lottery in the world while being graced by a stray bullet from some rando, all while two meteors simultaneously happen to hit you within a picosecond as a solar eclipse happens. And also just like how you can get some bitches. Alongside these, it also has its fair share of straight up contradictions. For example, the witch girl was supposed to lose her powers if she ever shed a tear, and she cries after one of the most cringeworthy lines ever for seemingly no reason, but we can clearly see in the future that she has not lost it. Speaking of the witch bitch, she shouldn't be able to exist. 
It was apparently stated explicitly that magic and sorcery doesn't exist in the Conan universe, but I can't find the exact quote so you can choose whether to believe it or not. Now that I mentioned the Conan universe, why the hell did Conan let Kid go after pretty much pinpointing him? I feel like that's a little bit out of character. Especially because right after letting him go, he resumes his pursuit of the caped phantom thief. Why let him go in the first place? Hakuba, who is supposed to be the pretty boy god tier detective of this story, and also Kuroba Kaito's main rival, also does this. First of all, I know that he is supposed to be the main rival because of their names. The Kuro in Kuroba means black, and the Haku in Hakuba means white. But this leads to the point that as his main rival narratively, Hakuba should be doing everything in his power to catch the guy. He literally knows Kaito Kid's true identity, not just a hunch or anything, he literally is sure of it. But the problem with this is that Hakuba never acts on it. I honestly can't think of another plausible explanation for this than for narrative convenience. I mean, the show would be over if he got caught, but then maybe don't introduce him in the first place? If they so badly want Kid to always win, don't introduce really threatening threats that have all the power to win. That probably is one of the reasons that this isn't set here in the great land of freedom. A rogue cop's body cam will randomly malfunction, and I'm doing bunny ears behind the camera if you couldn't tell, and the show will be over instantly. So what is really narratively different between those two situations? In both situations, the show would be over instantly. All of these little disparities and straight up contradictions make this seem like a toddler telling the story. Ever try to tell a story as a kid, or hear one from a kid? Oh, like the other day when my friend John and I went to the um uh the playground. Oh, uh, we met at uh preschool by the way, and oh uh, and we, uh, we played and uh, uh oh yeah, and yesterday we went to a different playground because he was out of town. Oh oh, but that was a different friend. None of the statements the child made were explicitly wrong or anything, but it was still hard as fuck to understand because of these small inconsistencies in how they tell the story. That is this show. And since I started to go a little into Kaito's invincible narrative shield that prevents any genuine trouble that comes his way, I would like to explore that a little more. Because it is especially atrocious in this show. Plot armor is a thing in almost all anime. After all, they need the hero to have the story about the hero. They can't kill them off. But even within those anime, how they are revived or saved are explained and make sense for the most part. But in Kaito Kid, they go without giving the slightest, most subtlest of fucks and basically just fall back to the excuse that he is cool and smart. They may as well give Kaito magic, this time the Harry Potter sorcery kind. Because none of the stuff he does is ever actually explained, he just poofs out of handcuffs and is able to change his disguise instantly and fucking teleport. And no explanation is given except for in a couple of occasions where Conan is involved. And you know what? I take back everything I said about Nakamori. He's literally going against something that is practically sorcery. Can you even blame him for letting Kid get away this many times? There are a few episodes where Conan, or Conan as a teenager, comes to help catch Kid, and I just want to add on that I also like the subtle continuity and progression of Conan as we see him more. We first see him as Shinichi, then as Conan, then Conan with I, and they don't freak out about it or explain it to everyone that they are the same people. They just let us connect the dots, and for those of us who have already familiarized ourselves with Conan, it's a nice subtle hint. Anyways, in those episodes, Conan, in Conan fashion, explains the trickery and how Kid was able to manage such a seemingly impossible task. And let me say this, those episodes are fire. It adds the hint of ingenuity and cleverness on both parties that they need to make it awesome. I think this show just out of the concept has so much potential to rival Conan as a good shonen that may seem cool to people of all ages. Young children can still admire the white knight cool boy, and audiences of a slightly older age can be fascinated by the quick-witted thinking and how everything goes according to Keikaku. So I believe that Kid can take a page out of Conan and maybe show us a little bit of the planning phase for the heist or explain it to the audience in retrospect about how everything was set up. Even if it is something stupid like gadgets, that's better than nothing. The professor in Conan makes him all kinds of gadgets that make some things possible. Is it a cop-out and somewhat lazy? Yeah, but it's way better than nothing. 
but as of right now, it remains the formulaic bullshit it is. The formula in question goes something like this. Kaito goes in, pulls the lick, nothing goes wrong, and he gets out. But none of this is to say that Conan is perfect. It's really formulaic. To the point where I can guess at first glance who pulled off the crime really consistently. And while I do think I am of the smarter demographic, I'm also realistic enough to not think that I'm a genius detective at the fantasy-like level of Conan. How to figure it out is very simple. First, figure out who pretty obviously has a reason to do it. Like, seeing the suspect being treated badly by the victim and they make a grimacing face towards them. Okay, now cross that guy off of the list. That guy is innocent. And now, repeat this and keep going down the list and find the one who you would least expect to do it under normal circumstances. The loving, caring wife? The loyal butler who has so much respect for the man? A self-report? Now, you have a way to discern pretty consistently who the perpetrator is. And this goes without saying that the episode structures are also very similar. Conan shows up at a crime scene, there's a murder, he seems stuck, and finally solves it but with the distinction that it has actually valid explanations. However, even then, with Conan having over 1000 episodes, this is bound to get old pretty fast. I'm not saying in any way shape or form that it's a bad formula. That's a simple yet intriguing formula that continues to attract new viewers and keeps old viewers that lets it have a staggering 1000 episodes. But it wouldn't kill to have some more variation. Maybe a cycle between a few, I've seen one episode where Conan already knows who did the crime, but just has to figure out how. They could utilize shifts in formula like that more often, creating diversity, keeping even more viewers hooked to always look forward to these changes. Again, I'm not saying formulaic shows are bad. Some of the best shows are formulaic. American sitcoms, old western cartoons, many One Piece arcs, Kaguya-sama Love is War, I can go on forever. But when you solely and religiously rely on that one thing, without anything to divert the audience's expectations, the amazement factor will only naturally fade away. And now that I've talked about some narrative issues with Kaito Kid, I would also briefly like to mention some of the technical things. The animation isn't all that bad for a 2014 anime, and I even like some of their small uses of CGI. Except for this one, this one was just bad. <laughs> It didn't hurt to look at, and it occurred in small doses to animate parts that would be hard to portray with regular 2D animation. Pretty positive. But my biggest gripe with any technical aspect of Kaito Kid is their pointy ass noses. Nah, I'm, I'm just kidding. It's their sincerely shitty dialogue. I don't really know how else to explain it without seeming overly vitriolic, but that is just what I feel. It's corny, it's not clever in the slightest, and no real human has ever said any line within the show. I guess the dialogue gets the points across, but it's the lack of a soul, the robotic, almost uncanny level of shitty dialogue for me. And not to mention that weird cackle Kaito does, and Aoko refers to herself in the third person. And Kaito treats her like shit with no real redeeming quality to make a girl like him except for his deafness. It's all stuff that is just like a low budget shitty anime. And when you make an anime, you don't want it to feel like a low budget shitty anime. You should try to make the characters as close to real life as possible in the form of a drawing. Unless, of course, you are going for something else, which would then constitute self-awareness, which I have said for a long time that it can make anything good. And I don't know how the voice acting sounds so shitty. It's not like they cut the budget on voice acting and hire grandos or something. They have Kape Yamaguchi as Kaito and Shinichi in his brief appearance, whom you might know as Usopp, and Shuichi Ikeda as Kaito's dad, whom you might also know as Shanks or Kite from Hunter x Hunter. These are all very renowned voice actors, so I don't know if it was a casting choice, but Kaito's especially sounds uncharacteristically dog shit for the VA it has. And one more small thing, why are there so many characters that are like, direct parallels to characters from the Conan universe? Overconfident but incapable police officer with a distinct style of facial hair? 
kind of like another overconfident but incapable detective with a distinct style of facial hair. How about a girl that doesn't know the secret identity of the person they like, and come on, they're not even trying with the character designs. Everything the show does seems to be for a narrative purpose rather than to actually flesh things out, make us connect with the characters, make them stand out, you know, things that are essential for any story. They only do the bare minimum. Let's once again return to the scene where the witch bitch cries, which should make her lose her powers, but doesn't. <laughs> What reason does she have to cry so genuinely here? Because he said she was sad? I genuinely can't think of another reason why anyone might cry. But they have to do it to make it make sense narratively, which it doesn't, the whole losing powers thing, and to get to an endpoint for the saga. This show is very bare bones. It's almost as if it were still under development. It doesn't flesh out anything, including the supposed smart cool shonen stuff, which is supposed to be the main selling point, the characters and their personalities, there are various plot holes, which normally wouldn't be too big of a deal, but this is supposed to be a spin-off series of a smart guy anime, so any sort of plot hole or inconsistency is a big problem. They just seriously need to slow the F down to think things through. This show had so much potential. I can't emphasize this enough. The concept is one of the coolest I know of, and even despite everything, I always thought that Kaito was cool AF, enough to make me try to get into magic when I was younger, and I still think he's sick. So props to them? There lies a part of me that really wished it to be as good as I remembered, but there lingers another part deeper inside that was pretty entertained by all the idiotness. Anyways, that was the mystic tale of a prepubescent child fascinated by a classy hero in white and how that youngster came to be utterly disappointed and in shame when really looking into the matter. See you next illusion. Holy fuck, that might have been the worst thing I've ever done. Jesus Christ. <laughs>